It's not your fault. He didn't look. Teddy! Call an ambulance. M10 9KC. What happened? He just walked into the road. He was plastered. In his 50s? Is he dead? He, he's breathing. You wanted to see me? I did, Sally, yes. Well, I, um, I called round at your flat last night to try and smooth things over, but you weren't in. I take it that was about Sarah's parting shot. I can't think what she's referring to. Yes, well, try, Sally. And I mean try hard. Well, I just I just can't because I always look up to you, you know. I, I, I'd never speak out of turn. So you never slag me off when I'm not here? No, I mean, if anything, I stick up for you. Oh, so that lot slag me off? N no. So, look, how long have we been colleagues? Well, I started here in the... No, it was rhetorical. Look, Ken. He's always banging on about this George Washington's cherry tree. Do you know what that is? Where he told the truth? Yes, correct. And in the process, he gained his father's trust. So, what I'm saying, Sal, is if you tell me exactly what you said, I will admire you. Well, last week I might have said you were ruthless. She might have been talking about that because you were on the phone to a supplier and you weren't taking any nonsense. She might have heard me say that. Really? That's you slagging me off? Well, I mean, this is it. I mean, you could say ruthlessness was a, a quality in a boss in a leader such as you. Oh, all right, Sal. Dismiss. That's enough. So... So I'll thank you not to talk about me behind my back in the future. Never again. I promise. <laughs> if they're so bad for us, why give it to Sam? How can he reflect on life and enjoy silence with being corrupted by a smartphone? And he's already got one. I apologise if I've appeared callous or ungrateful. Just a bit, on both counts. But you left me no option. Why won't you let me do something nice for you? An idiot could see that you'd love a smartphone. You're not stupid. You don't really believe that anything post-steam train is a devil. You're just putting on an act. It's tiresome and pompous. Does the name Van Cleef mean anything to you? I bet he'd a Van Cleef. Lindsay? Keith. Keith Van Cleef? Yeah. There's a cousin, I believe. Yeah, he was an editor on a weekly newspaper over in Rochdale. You're forever raking him out of the pub. I got him the last time. They're like the Astors or, or the Vanderbilts. What was it called? You know, that, that era, the fancy New York lot. The, the Gilded Age. There was a film, Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh. My left foot. No. 19th century. New York. Gangs of New York. No. Lawrence was married to a Van Cleef. Today is the anniversary of her death. I've done some digging. She met something of an untimely end. You know, that rings a bell. A skiing accident. Or was it hiking? Took a tumble on the Alps. Correct, George fell to her death during a hiking holiday in Switzerland. And you're misinterpreting this how? Don't you see? He has been very quiet about it. I mean, Sean was completely in the dark at the beginning, remember? Lawrence didn't even volunteer that he'd been married. Now this, a death in mysterious circumstances. The poor woman was killed in a tragic accident when she's supposed to be enjoying her holiday. You said it. Killed. Oh, Lord above, Todd. First you sit your tongue down his throat, now you've got him bumping off his wife. His wife, who may or may not have known about his true nature. But he knows he's gay, but he can't admit it. Finds himself trapped in a, in a marriage to a wealthy heiress, books them a little alpine holiday, takes her up to the top of the mountain and, oh, oops a daisy, gives her a little nudge. Voila! He's got life insurance coming out of his ears. Next thing you know, he's down Canal Street on a podium. Drinks are on me. What other explanation could there be? You are getting very cynical in your old age. My mum is rubbing off on you. Me cynical? Yeah, you're too trusting, you're na naive. Look, don't you go breathing a word of this crackpot conspiracy to Sean, or you'll end up with more than a bowl of cornflakes in your face. He could be getting into bed with a psychopath. Look, look, just get on the phone to Mrs Buchanan first thing in the morning, or we'll be Betty and her husband in his socks. Hey, 
Mary, so you're on your own, son? <laughs> no, love. I'm with Mary. She's oh. on a comfort break. Oh. Oh, home from home. Did you hear about the accident? Yeah, Stephen, let me know. He's gone to the hospital with him. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I understand. Decent album? Sure. Not gonna get you. A glass of well-deserved red wine, please. Ooh, I'll see if we've got any of that. And whatever the rabble are having. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Barlow. I'll have the same again, please. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Carla. Oh, Faye, did you find out what your mates were doing tomorrow night? Oh, it's uh, an 80s thing. Craig's come with his friend from work. Ah, oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, we just got lost of the tickets. It's sold out. Oh. What about you? Oh, I've, um, I've not decided yet. Oh, I'm sure it'll be a classier than an 80s night in town. I wouldn't count on it. We end up staying in, in solitaire, on my own. That'll be the day. Hmm. Sounds like he had a gallon, as my mother likes to say. You'd be amazed how often it happens. But no, the poor uh, woman driving wasn't going especially fast. Far from it. I just hope he pulls through. If anything else occurs to you, let us know. Well, I will, and thanks, officer. What did he say? Uh, it sounds like the driver's in the clear. My account tallies with Nick. He just stepped into its path. I didn't know he was a drinker. I wonder if he was drowning his sorrows. Mm, well, let's just hope he comes around fast for everybody's sake. I'm still annoyed at you. I dare say. She shouldn't have called you. But if we're going to do this, we'll do it right. I think maybe me and someone should discuss this on our own. Well, you need to know that we haven't pressured her into any of this. I mean, she'll tell you that herself, won't you, sweetheart? I am. Um, I know I haven't covered myself in glory these last few weeks. I did text. Have you blocked me from seeing your readings? No. Okay, look, I, I, I think um, for now, um, you, you should come home with me. I mean, we, we don't have to rule anything out. It'll just give us all a bit of thinking time. Well, Summer's already done quite a lot of thinking. I'm going ahead with it. She's 18. She knows her own mind. Yeah. I accept that. And it's your decision. And I will support you. They just... Maybe... Come home in the meantime. For me. If that's what she'd like to do. But you think he'll survive? It's too early to say, but there is a good chance. So, I mean, he could be sat up and chatting by tea time. Do you have contact details for any family members? Oh, well, they're in lies of tale. Um, I, I, I could give you his son's number, but good luck getting him to answer. An uh, induced coma uh, sounds risky. It'll help protect the brain from further damage. Hopefully reduce the swelling, too. Stay positive. He had a drink or two inside him, I believe. Mm, they should ban it. Well, don't tell her that she runs a pub. Um, I can give you Leo's number. That's his son. We used to be an item. Thank you very much. Give my love to your Roth. Try. Uh, I've uh, thoroughly cleaned the carpet. You'd be pleased to know. So you should. You threw it. I see. Todd's back. I've actually got some information that you might want to hear. I doubt that very much. It's about Lindsay Van Cleef. How she met her end. Well, Lawrence can tell me that when Lawrence is good and ready. It was actually all over the internet if you'd have cared to look. Yeah, well, I didn't have any need to, did I? Yeah, well, I'm sure you will now. I'll have um, half when you're ready. Well, anyway, my phone's dead, so even if I did want to look, which I don't... I... I'm just worried that you might have got into bed with the wrong man. Look, Todd, he rejected you, OK? Lawrence is my boyfriend. Mine. Oh, something's afoot. Yeah. All right, I'll drop it. Just have a look when you get home, all right? Lindsay Van Cleef, death of. It was in all the local papers, and if you decide you can't wait, I'll be over there with my drink if you eventually pour it. You'll wake up. I wish you would. 
You'll tell us everything, I'm sure, and then we can put all this behind us. Us? You. Leo's disowned his dad, met someone else, probably living happily ever after. I just, I just want to be put out of my misery. I understand. Why are you still here? Well, yeah, I've always been good in a crisis. Andy, I need some air. Can you, if he wakes up, can you text me straight away, yeah? Oh, yeah, you bet. And I, I panicked. But any, anyway, here goes nothing. So long, old pal. Any change? I, I know. I, I've been trying to uh, to speak to him. I don't they say uh, uh, that can can help? Mm, depends what you said. Oh, well, I said he should have. Uh, Stuck to the orange juice. I mean, some coma patients can hear. They wake up and remember everything that was said to them whilst they were lying there unconscious. Really? Oh, maybe that's an old wives' tale. Look, I've just seen the doctor. Um, he's coming in to check on him, so let's clear off. Yeah. until you tell me why. And what did he say to that? Well, what could he say? Right, come on then. Let's hear it. Yo, yo, yo! Oh, she ready? Uh, it's putting the finishing touches to our outfit, I believe. Uh, the, the, the amount of thought that goes into it is astonishing. With Haley, she put on her anorak and her smile. We'll be ready. Yeah. Uh, can I go up? You, you mustn't ask. Oh. Later, Luddite. Uh, have a wonderful evening. And, and please be assured, I shall communicate with you more effectively from now on, should I be detained. Mm. Well, maybe we should just send you a telegram. <laughs> and I apologise once again for ruining your evening. Hey, stop it. Look, we've literally got millions of them left. Mm. Don't put the chain on the door. We'll get the last tram. You take care now. Oh, and don't forget, tomorrow, parish rooms, half six. Bat watch. This is terrible. See, it's all there. The mysterious circumstances, the paucity of concrete information, paucity means shortage or lack, the implication, the illusion. The woman died. I helped him buy flowers this afternoon. He's devastated. Devastated or guilty? You're unbelievable. Drink up, Todd. I know this is a shock to you. The only thing I'm shocked about is the depths that you're willing to sink to. Like I say, get out. You haven't got the authority. Is this what you do? You just go around and destroy people's relationships? Is that what you were put on this earth this for? This isn't about me. Billy and Paul, Jason and Eva. That was years ago. You see a couple and you destroy it. That's what they should call you, the couple destroyer. Oh, yeah, really, trips off the tongue. And I'll tell you for why. Because you're jealous. You cannot stand to see anybody else happy because you know that you never will be. Nobody wants you, Todd. You're toxic. Fine. Sue yourself, Sean. It's your funeral. Be sure to count on Shuttleworths. 
Well, according to Nick, he went 15 foot in the air, did a triple somersault. <laughs> we shouldn't joke, should we? He was paralytic there, but for the grace of Santa go I. <laughs> Where are you, mate, anyway? Well, there's a fair from the ropes and up to Piccadilly. Yeah, good lad. Hey. So, what did you do with the toffee apple? <sighs> I ate it. Look, I'm sorry I should have checked with you before I put my name down, but I've managed to wriggle out of it. Have you? That's good. Well, I don't sound too thrilled. No, I am. I am. I just thought we'll have a nice, quiet night in, eh? We'll watch a film or something. Seriously? Oh, right, OK. Is that no good? Well, have I got a choice? Do you know what, love? You pull a face when I say I'm working. Now you're pulling a face when I'm not working. I can't win. I'd take you to Sydney Harbour to watch the fireworks if I could afford it. What, so it's Sydney Harbour or nothing? Faye's got a 80s night in town. It sounds like fun. What, you'd rather do that? Well, it's sold out now, but, yeah, it does sound good. How's an 80s night fun? You're stuck to a carpet, stone cold sober, listening to the flaming cure. Well, I don't have to be sober, do I? And therein lies the rub. <sighs> All right. I know it's not the easiest night of the year for you. All right, all right, we'll stay in and watch telly. At least we'll love each other. Now, I'm not sure if you're being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. We should make a New Year's resolution. What? Of quality time together, eh? Mm, yeah. Uh, hello, streetcars. Yep. Talk about this now. No. Good. Hey, sight for sore eyes. Nice top. Yeah. Thanks. How are we doing? Fine. Everything okay? Yeah, don't let that bath overflow. Side. You're kidding me? No, I'm kidding her. What else was I meant to do? Well, what about the app? Oh, did she run out of data? So, that's some charted territory. How long are you going to play along for? I am not feeling great about this. And, um, how would he feel? Leo, straight to voicemail. Cal surprise. So Teddy had had a few. Staggering around like a stage drunk, according to Stephen. Poor bloke. Ten yards from that door. Hey. Mm. Hello? Hey. You OK? You told us what happened. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I went to the hospital with, with Jenny. Uh, patients touch and go. Fancy another. Oh, thanks. Did you call six fellas? At home. What do you think? I mean, he's been at the hospital all afternoon. Don't be insensitive. Want it to be hard, that's all I'm saying. Uh, maybe we should keep that all on the, uh, the down low until it's all been confirmed. Yeah, fine by me. Oh, that's fantastic news, Doctor. Thank you. All right, bye. Well? Well, it, it's, it's a bit of a blur, but uh, he's still stable. Meaning? Meaning that if he makes it through the night, there's a good chance he'll wake up. Well, that's fantastic. And then you can solve the mystery of Leo. <sighs> Aunt Daisy. I'm coming. By the way, don't worry about the other thing. Uh, the keys for the van, I've put them off till tomorrow. Uh, Sean's not here, I'm afraid. It's told I've come to see. Oh, it's just... <laughs> oh uh, Mrs Van Cleef was very appreciative of the bouquet. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what are you watching? One of those true crime things. Believe it or not, my late wife's passing is my business, not yours, or Sean's, or anyone else's. Have you spoken to him, then? When I'm good and ready, I'll tell him about the most harrowing week of my life. But until then, I'd rather amateur conspiracy theorists who make unwanted advances keep out of my way. Circumstances were murky. 
you ever lost anyone? Yeah, I have. Me and Sarah lost the baby. Before I knew for sure that I was gay. I knew I was gay. But I thought I could make it work. So I know all about loss, if that's where you're going with this. Do you rush to tell your new boyfriends about how your baby died? No. Then you'll understand. My son, he didn't fall off a mountain. I could tell you exactly what happened right now. But why should I? You're not my friend. And I don't trust you anymore. Well, if your moped wasn't insured, then maybe I should take you to court. Okay, I'll, I'll settle. Uh, let's call it ten thousand pounds by the end of play tomorrow. Take it or leave it. Fantastic. And I promise you, you'll never hear from me again. Nor will anyone else, because as soon as I get your money, I'm leaving the UK for good. David Tennant stars as the former KGB officer whose death triggered one of the most complex investigations in the history of the Met Police. Brand new drama, Litvinenko, is streaming now on ITVX. Next on ITV1, Daniel Craig stars in our Bond movie, Spectre.